In this video, I'm going to run through some of the benefits of artboards in Adobe Photoshop and how you can use them to create something like a social media campaign, which is what I'm going to show you now. But there are many different uses for it. This is just one that I think is more efficient than just working in separate documents inside of Photoshop. So first of all, we need to create a document that has artboards. I have a couple of graphics that I'm going to use in a basic social media graphic, which is fake and totally for your benefit. So I'm going to go here to New. We're going to create a document where I can start my design. I'm going to call this Social Media. And under Document Type, you'll notice that Artboard is an option. Now, you can add artboards to existing documents, but let's just go ahead and start with an artboard document. And as a size, you can put your own custom size or you can choose one of their pre-made sizes. And I'm going to go with 1280 by 800. I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll see that what we have here is really similar to a regular Photoshop document with a few exceptions. We have a name to this section of the document and it says Artboard 1. In fact, this white is your artboard. Over here in your layers, you have the artboard, which is shown as collapsible, and it actually functions a lot like a group. You can rename that, which I'm going to do here. I'm going to rename it to, uh, let's just rename this to, <laughs> I don't remember what the size is, 1280, there we go. 1280 by 900, I think is what it was. 1280 by 900. Now you'll see that my artboard has been renamed. I can turn it on and off, and it functions like its own layer, kind of. Let's go ahead and build this graphic quickly inside of this new artboard, and then see some of the features that artboard provides for us, which you wouldn't be able to do in a normal document. I'm just going to drag over these components. I'm going to scale them put them where I think they look best and then we can duplicate them go here to the background now let's put a little bit of text and let's move that text where it's not behind this other layer all right all this is just some standard Photoshopping, and I'm not going to explain all this to you because we're going to focus on artboards today. So now I have my design, and I have several different layers I'm using with my design. Now I'm going to have to redo this for several different social media sizes. How can I use artboard to make my workflow more efficient? Let's go ahead and create a new artboard inside this document. And this is where the power of artboards starts to become apparent. If I go over here to my move tool and right under that, select my artboard tool, you'll notice that I get these plus icons. If you don't see those, click on the artboard itself in your layers palette, and you should see these little plus icons. I can create a new artboard simply by hitting one of these plus icons and adding an artboard to my document. This is a really useful feature for you to be able to create multiple artboards very quickly and streamline your workflow. So now that I have this second artboard, I'm actually going to change this to a square size. So with this artboard selected, I have my width and height at the top. I'm just going to hit 1080 by 1080. And now I can create a graphic which would be useful for a social media that only prefers square things. Wonder which one that one would be. All right, so now let's drag over my designs from the first artboard to the second. First thing I need to do is duplicate them. You can hit Command or Control J to do that, or you can just drag them down here and drop them on the new layers palette. Now, I'm going to click on that and drag it up to my new artboard and let it go. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that it drops all of it perfectly into my other artboard. I say perfectly. Now, the other artboard is square and a different size, so I will have to do a little bit of work here. I'm actually 
going to select all, which is Command A. You'll notice I get the selection, and it's only around the artboard I'm working in. Now I'm going to grab all my layers, align them to the center, and then move them around just so. This is just giving me a chance to redo this slightly for the benefit of this new squared off design. There, now I have a quick square version of this same design. Now I can create as many artboards as I want. So let's go ahead and do it again. I'm going to click and create a new artboard right beside that. And in this one, I'm going to go with, again, a size here that is pre-made for me. But in this case, I'm going to actually make it a portrait size. You can do that right here with this button, and it will flip it for you. Or you can make it landscape, either way you prefer. Now I'm going to rename this portrait. Then I'm going to duplicate all my layers again and drag them up into this new portrait size. Now, notice what happens here with this squared logo. It has fallen outside of the artboard, and you'll see that it is not contained in the artboard. It's out here on its own, hanging. If I drag this in and let go, it suddenly becomes part of the artboard portrait. Now, this is really useful because you can keep design elements anywhere you want outside of your artboards, and when you export your artboards, you won't see these elements. You might be familiar with this if you've worked with Adobe Illustrator or if you've worked with InDesign, but for a traditional Photoshop document, this isn't possible. So I'm going to really quickly redo this graphic to fit this new size. And then we're going to export these. So I'm setting this up for portrait. Then I'm just going to take this, move it into the middle. And now I have three totally different sizes of the same social media graphic. And I have them individually named as artboards. And now I can export them. Let's go over to File, Export, Artboards to File. Now here I have a destination option, which I can go into any destination I want. Let's go into Documents. And then I have a prefix. In this case, I'm going to say Social Media, Dash, and then after that is going to be the name of the artboard include overlapping areas or artboard content only. I'm going to say only artboard content. So anything that's falling outside the artboard, I don't want that exported. And then do I want to export selected artboards? That would be an option if I had one actually selected, but since I don't, it's going to export all of them. Include the background. That doesn't matter. We are covering the background up. And then you can choose your file type which yes, you can export as PSD, PDF, or PNGs with transparencies, quality, and then I'm going to hit run. Artboards to files was successful. Now what I can do is go over here into my documents, and you'll notice that I now have three new files. And it has the prefix I specified, and then it has the name of the artboard afterwards. The beauty of this is you can export more easily, you can name them more easily, and you can move designs around inside multiple artboards much more easily than you can between two different files in Photoshop that are open. And I find this really convenient, especially when I'm working for clients that need me to design a graphic for various different sizes. I'll show you a quick example of a real world usage for this. And here is a client which needed an e-blast, a landing page, a social media graphic, 
a square social media graphic, and a slider for their websites for their website and these all had to be very specific sizes I could do that inside of artboards and then when I exported them they all export beautifully with their own names and all at the same time it's a wonderful way to work and I find it a lot easier as a workflow you can also use artboards to export as PDFs as you might have noticed when I went to the export function which means that you can actually create PDF books inside of Photoshop and easily export multiple pages of a PDF from artboards. Some other things you might want to know is that you can create artboards from layers. So if I have a document with no artboards in it, like this, I can go over here, unlock my layer, and then right click and choose artboard from layer. And in this way, I can easily create a new artboard simply using the layer dimensions. I'm going to bring in this as well and show you how that would work. So let's bring this outside. This is not currently an artboard. It's just a graphic outside of this other artboard. We only have one artboard right now in our document. But I can create a new artboard from this layer. Name it Artboard 2. And now I have artboards with the exact dimensions of the image that I was using. Another really useful function. Of course, you can use the artboard tool to just click and drag out an artboard of any size you prefer, and then you can type in and resize it up here as needed. A very useful feature in Adobe Photoshop. I find that I use it a lot when I'm creating graphics for clients which need multiple graphics of multiple sizes. And some of the functionality is very similar to what you might get in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm really happy to see that Photoshop is now providing it for those who prefer using Photoshop and maybe are not as familiar with other Adobe products. So enjoy artboards. I'd love to see what you do with artboards and how you make use of this cool feature inside of Photoshop. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help out.